Good morning, Kansas Fest. It's nice to see your bright, shining faces this morning. Good morning. We're ready for our first talk of the day. This would be Charles Mangan talking about how to turn your Apple II into an 8-bit weapon. Ooh, here we go. Thank you for waking up with me this morning. I, I promise to uh, continue. Uh, let's get this yeah. situated here. <laughs> All right, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to warn you there are going to be some um, potentially loud sounds uh, produced by an Apple IIc during this presentation, so uh, don't be surprised if you hear uh, a giant wall of sound. Uh, if, you have, uh, if, you're, uh, if your hearing aids are set to, to high gain, you might want to turn them down. Uh, there are no flashing lights, so don't worry about uh, epilepsy or, or uh, any uh, photosensitive uh, shocks at all to your system. So uh, I'm Charles Mangan. You might recognize me from previous Kansas Fests. This is my sixth, I think, uh, we determined. And um, uh, I've given a couple of talks about uh, mice and things in the past, and I've also demonstrated this particular piece of software in a much more elaborate setup uh, in the past. Uh, but this is going to be more of a how-to so that you can take the hardware and software uh, that I'm presenting today and do the same kinds of things that um, Seth and um, name escapes me uh, of a Sorry? Michelle. Michelle. Seth and Michelle of 8-Bit Weapon do when they're recording uh, their Apple II-based uh, synth albums for 8-Bit Weapon. So you can do this uh, with your own hardware and your own musical talent, such as it is. So the first, uh, first part of the puzzle is the DMS software. The latest release is DMS 2 uh, for the Apple II. Uh, I believe it requires any Apple II with 64K or more, um, and if uh, and some kind of serial card for the stuff that I'm demonstrating today. But it doesn't require a serial card. Uh, you can play directly on the machine itself without any serial interface, um, just by playing on the, the keyboard. Um, did I see a question in the back? Um, it requires a 2E or 2C. It, it requires an enhanced machine. Okay, so it's a, okay. <coughs> Sorry, I misspoke. It requires a uh, 2E or better, and I believe 64K at least, yeah. uh, of RAM. Sorry, thank you, Ivan, for clearing that up. Um, so this is the, uh, the screen that you see with DMS, and this is the actual playing interface, as you can see live over here on the 2C. Um, so uh, without further ado, a quick demo. So this is the uh, this is the main playing interface on the uh, the DMS software, and you can see we've got the notes on the keyboard here arranged with uh, the notes on the piano keyboard. So if you type uh, Escape for one, you get uh, a G sharp or an A sharp. The tab you get A, Q you get B, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is where the sound comes in. So that is um, the acoustic guitar setting. Uh, I like the I like the banjo myself. Uh, it also has uh, piano. And if you want to do the real bleeps and bloops, you can do a uh, square wave. So that doesn't have any attack or sustain, it just has the straight up square wave and a sawtooth. So you can do um, more uh, traditional sorts of uh, uh, Apple II bleeps and bloops. Uh, I think my favorite is probably the clarinet. Um, 
and that's the uh, that's the general interface for the keyboard for uh, DMS. There's also on uh, the flip side of this disc a uh, piece of software called DMS Drummer, which is the same same uh, general interface, but instead of uh, musical notes, you have drum kit sounds. So there's uh, bass drum, hi-hat, clapping, lasers, various things that you can do to turn your Apple II into a drum machine. The, um, am I on the mic? Uh, I just, yeah, percussive maintenance seems to work. No? And how about now? No, okay. It kind of cuts in and out. The other one's on the. Yeah, the other one's on on the two C. Well, I did just just change the battery. Right now. Uh, can yeah. you guys hear me? Okay. I'll try not to shock the system too much. Uh, anyhow, so that's the that's the uh, basic software interface. Um, without any uh, additional hardware, you just run the software, play on the keyboard, and you can record and sequence your own music, save it to a floppy disk, play it back later. Um, and uh, if you want, you can record that as audio out to, uh, to a computer or a tape or whatever, and uh, just play that way. But <laughs> since we're here to talk about making music, um, <coughs> The, the next obvious step is to hook this up to something that you could either play pre-recorded uh, <coughs> sequences or play on a real keyboard instead of a computer keyboard and be able to actually play with um, you know, the existing you know, talent or, like I said, uh, such as it is. Um, I don't play the piano, so I'm asking Melody to play the piano for me. Um, just give me one moment while I get a thing set up. So, um, what we're going to do next is take MIDI signals out from the Mac. So, MIDI is the uh, music interface for a um, uh, microphone again. All right. I'll just talk louder. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the microphone doesn't want me to talk too loud. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, it takes. Uh, sorry. Maybe it doesn't like it in your pocket. It doesn't like my pocket. Okay, it doesn't like to live in the pocket. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do today is take MIDI, which is the musical interface, digital interface, something like that, um, signals from this uh, MIDI keyboard. And you can get one of these for less than 100 bucks, uh, or you can get a full-on keyboard. You can spend considerable money and get uh, full 88 keys, etc. But the interface is the same. It's generally uh, going to be MIDI, and the modern ones are going to be MIDI over USB. So its physical interface is USB, and it talks MIDI, which is essentially a serial interface. So what we're going to take that out of the USB, put it into this, uh, this little box that I have here on my desk, called the, uh, appropriately, the DMS box. Um, and that translates that USB MIDI signal from notes on the piano keyboard into the keystrokes that I would be typing on the computer keyboard. So uh, it turns the, I want to play an A into, I want to press the tab key. Uh, the DMS software on, the, on this side listens for those characters as if you were playing it on the computer keyboard, and then you rock out. Uh, throw the horns. Anybody? There you go. Thank you. So we hook it up. Uh, the magic box here is called the DMS box, uh, or the MIDI DMS. Uh, that's how it presents itself in software. <coughs> and uh, if anybody wants to come take a look, it's essentially a breakout board for a Teensy Arduino clone. And all it's doing in, uh, in hardware is converting the USB signal into a standard RS-232 serial signal. Um, the cable uh, between the DMS box and the 2C is a fairly standard serial cable. Get it from David Schmidt. Um, that retro floppy dot. 
Com. <laughs> Did that work? No. Um, I'll just talk loud for it for right now. So, so is that the same serial cable as the disk transfer one? If you're using a standard, uh, if you're using a uh, a cable that'll work with ADT Pro, yeah. Yeah. I think we decided it is without hardware handshaking. Or did we decide it was with hardware handshaking? I'm blanking out. I've been I don't know. I just know that on the 2C, this is only the 2C that we're talking about. Right, because yeah, the um, 2C has a weird yeah, serial handshaking issues. Weird handshaking, and if you get your cable from Retrofloppy, he makes them in a special way to get around that problem, and it does not work with, um, with DMS. So I don't know which lines have to be connected in the serial cable, but. but um, a straight through would certainly work, but I don't know whether um, you need a full set of five pin, five wires. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can we can examine the the cable in more uh, detail, but uh, for a two E with a super serial card oh, yeah. or a two GS, any uh, any working ADT Pro cable will work. Uh, the two C has a weird serial um, handshaking issue, where if you in D, in uh, ADT Pro you set it to I'm using uh, an image writer cable versus a standard cable, and, it'll, and it's, it's, that's the difference between the two. Uh, um, you, but if you get a cable from me today at the vendor fair, it is guaranteed to work. Uh, okay. And, and even the 2C Plus is fine. It's only the 2C that's an issue. Yeah, the 2C Plus is fine. It has a different serial interface. Um, it's just the 2C that has, that has issues. Um, and that's just a matter, again, of getting the right cable. Or if you have a cable that doesn't work, uh, either disconnecting or reconnecting one of the pins. Um, and uh, like I said, it's the, uh, uh, the cables that I have with me are guaranteed to work because they came from David Schmidt specifically for this purpose. Great. Um, and you can use that serial cable for ADT Pro as well. So it, it's, uh, it's compatible in that way. Um, so this box, as I said, takes USB on one end and RS-232 on the other end. And it will talk to a super serial card, 2GS serial card, or 2C or 2C plus serial card. Um, and that takes the signals and converts them into keystrokes. And the final step, if you want, is to record that audio. Obviously, the 2C has a headphone jack, 2C plus does not, but there's a modification for that. Um, the GS has a headphone jack. Uh, the 2E does not, but there's a modification for that as well. Um, which I make this little tiny board that hooks into the speaker jack and turns it into a headphone jack. Uh, and I'll have a handful of those at the vendor fair as well. Um, so the uh, details for making music, um, you take your MIDI software on your Apple II, or on your Apple II, on your Mac or PC, and to choose which instrument you want on the DMS software, the MIDI channel corresponds to the uh, instrument here. So if you start playing on channel four, it will start playing on the acoustic guitar. And if you switch to channel three, it'll start playing on the banjo. Does that make sense? Anybody here use um, uh, MIDI software or, or music sequencing things? I know why it does. Um, so it's usually just a drop-down menu as to which channel you want to send your, your output to. Um, and then if you're doing DMS Drummer, you send your MIDI out on channel 9, and it switches the keystrokes and the notes to uh, be compatible with DMS Drummer because the keystrokes are slightly different uh, because there's not eight instruments and there's not two, oct two full octaves or eight full octaves or whatever it is. Channel uh, 10. Sorry? Channel 10, right? I think it's channel 9. I'm not entirely sure. I was using channel 10. <laughs> channel, ten channel 10 is the usual MIDI track for drums. Okay, so it's channel 10 is the usual MIDI track for drums. Uh, and if that doesn't work, MIDI track, not, uh, MIDI channel 9. So if you were using channel 10, then that's great. One through eight are the, uh, the other software instruments. So here is a quick demo. So I've got on my machine,
little piece of software called Alka Musica, which is, um, uh, let's just go ahead and mirror the, mirror the display. You guys can see that. There you go. So this is, this is a free or cheap piece of software called Alka Musica, um, and it just plays MIDI tracks, these .mid files. Um, and uh, so I'm going to just start playing here. I'm going to choose the MIDI DMS as my output. And I'm going to play it on, let's say, channel one for the piano. And you should start hearing music coming out. Oh, sorry, I skipped a step. We have to set DMS from keyboard control to serial control, and that is a capital X. So you'll see it's in serial control here. We've got the indicator on the screen. So once it's under serial control, we should be able to play MIDI out here. So you can see how that works. All that is being produced by the software on the 2C. There's no music coming out of the, uh, the Mac at all. Um, and uh, as you can see, I was changing, changing the channel, and it changed the instruments automatically as I switched the channels. Um, it'll play the full five octaves, or I don't know exactly how many octaves that are in um, the MIDI uh, series of uh, the full MIDI series of notes. Um, and uh, the only caveat really with playing back something like this is it'll only play one track at a time because the, uh, the software or the, the hardware can only play one voice at a time. So if you play two notes, it's kind of a race condition. It'll, if you try and play two notes simultaneously for a chord, it'll choose whichever one gets to the machine first, uh, or actually do whichever one comes second because it'll clobber the first one. So how do you play the piano? Um, if you are a uh, musician and can actually play a piano or other MIDI instrument like a drum kit, uh, you can do that, again, with this cheap piece of software or something like Logic or GarageBand or anything that will make a MIDI sequence. Um, so I've got my MPK Mini 2, which is this keyboard here, uh, as the input, and the destination is the MIDI DMS device, and we'll do it on, uh, again, on channel 1. And if my lovely assistant Melody, <coughs> play a little bit. And so now we can actually, since that's been recorded, we can play that back. We can play that back as a MIDI instrument on the DMS. Hello, the clicking. Okay, um, we can play that back having recorded it. <coughs> on a different instrument. Um, and so that's the beginnings of the workflow, getting music out from the 2C. Uh, the next obvious step would be recording that um, either in the DMS software. So if you want to play and record uh, your sequence in the DMS software and save it to a floppy disk to play it back later, uh, that is possible with serial control or keyboard control. Um, 
But if you want to record the actual audio out, you need something like a headphone jack. So the 2C is a perfect example. Uh, you just plug in a standard audio cable. Uh, you'll get one channel of audio back out to record into your recording software or into a mixer or what have you for live performance. If you then layer those performances, so I've got um, one track of Fur Elise here. And then I've got another track. Um, so you take those two tracks and layer them in your recording software or multi-track or what have you. And you end up with something that you can, uh, you can then have uh, your multi-track uh, audio. So I did that earlier um, with, uh, thank you Melody, everyone. I did that earlier with a track that you might recognize. Um, let's turn off some of these tracks and... <laughs> so, I recorded uh, that in four different passes to create uh, this. And again, all the audio is being created by So you see the ultimate result. Um, and that's, uh, that's just one example. Um, obviously you can do uh, classical music, you can do modern music, you can do something with drum tracks, you can layer whatever audio you already have, but this gives you another instrument in your arsenal of uh, musical instruments for either live performance or for recording, and you can make, uh, you can make your own 8-bit weapon albums like uh, Class Apples. So that's, uh, that's it for the demo. Are there any questions about the hardware or software? I'll try and answer any questions about the software. I'm not the author of the software. Michael Mahone is. Um, so he'll be able to give you more detail about the actual technical side of things. I did design and create the hardware, so I can answer the hardware and the actual um, physical cabling and setup as well. Yes, Jeff. Um, so when you are playing on the Apple II, uh, can you record the keystrokes? Is there, any, is there any recording or saving or playback mechanism on the Apple II, or does it always have to come in from outside? Yes, you can record on the Apple II. Um, if we uh, switch back to the um, uh, keyboard control, if you hit P for, or uh, I think it's R for record or play, um, yeah, so you hit. Uh, uh, yes, there is a recording mode <laughs> in the software to record your sequence for later playback on the two. Um, so you can you can download tracks from uh, from other places, put them on a floppy disk, and play them back with the software, or you can save your own to a disk. Yes. And, and those will just be like a small mini file, just kind of yep. work notes at what points in time, so very compact. Yes, those are essentially note timings. Um, and uh, the files themselves are fairly small. It's not recording the actual audio to a floppy disk, otherwise you'd get two or three notes in and you'd run out. It's not, um, MIDI. It's not MIDI per se, but it's you know, like it. It's MIDI-like, yeah. It's not, it, you couldn't then take that and play it as a MIDI track. It's specific to, to DMS. Also, the DMS drummer software, as distinct from the DMS software, which is the synthesizer, the DMS drummer software has its own built-in sequencer, so you can write drum patterns, um, or songs in without anything outward. Yeah, as Ivan was saying, he's more familiar with the drummer side of things. 
Um, it has a built-in sequencer, so you can actually do a live sequencing performance, um, add uh, drum beats to various points in the sequence and build it up live, uh, and then save that sequence for playback later. Uh, is, the, is the hardware box uh, compatible with the GS, and what does it cost? The hardware box is compatible with anything with a serial port and anything with a USB port, so Mac or PC. Um, and the, uh, the box itself is, uh, I think I'm selling them for 55 and then uh, an extra $5 will get you a cable for the 2C. That's what I have with me. Uh, I may be able to scrounge a cable for a 25 pin for the, serial, for the Super Serial card or whatever. But um, So 55 uh, for the box and software, 60 for the box software and cable. No, you cannot. Um, it is not bi-directional. You can't play on the, the, the 2C and get MIDI out. There's, uh, there's better ways of getting, <laughs> recording a MIDI instrument into your, uh, into your Mac or PC. Uh, yeah, you have. Did you were demonstrating something with your with the game port? Yeah. In the back. I just wanted to comment that I've been playing with this all weekend, using both the synth software and the drum software, um, and using uh, uh, MIDI controllers, drum pads, and, and keyboards. It's super fun. It's like, and we we uh, um, I, I took a track that I'd done. In, in GarageBand and, or Logic, and I uh, and I just changed one of the tracks to play the bass line on the Apple IIc instead, and it was awesome. So it's if you're into this stuff at all, it's it's there's something a little bit magical about using your your Apple II as a synthesizer or drum machine. Thank you. Ed. Any other questions or comments? I will have a handful of these available at the vendor fair, like I said, for uh, 55 or uh, 60 with the cable. Um, I've got a few copies of the software. If you want the software without the hardware, I'll have to ask Michael how much for that, but I think it's going to be on the order of 25 or 30 to press for, for a floppy with DMS and DMS drummer on it uh, if you don't want the, uh, the hardware box. Um, it is uh, commercial software, but it is not copy protected. Uh, we are, you are on your honor, <laughs> you're on your honor not to share it if you buy it or to buy it if you want it. Um, and uh, that's what I've got for today.